Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Karen Abasco, your WWF Philippines ambassador, and welcome to the second episode of the Save Our Planet webinar series, Going on a Planet-Based Diet. The Save Our Planet webinar series aims to educate people how our food choices affect the environment. Usually, we think about pollution and deforestation when we think about environmental issues. However, how we produce, consume, and dispose of our food actually plays a vital role in helping our planet. Last January, we celebrated Zero Waste Month by giving you tips and tricks how to reduce food waste and plastic waste connected to food. For today's episode, we will be focusing on exploring a planet-based diet. Wow, I've heard of a lot of diets, but we ko lang narinig na may diet pala for the planet. Well, actually, the food that I like, usually I'm a health enthusiast, so I like less meat, more vegetables, and more fruits. And someone who just loves food, like me, I just find it so amazing that we can actually help Mother Nature just by eating. So today, I'm excited for us to learn more about this planet-based diet. But before I introduce our speaker, I want to see where you guys are. Can we do a quick check, page and check where you, our audiences are and comment on our location below so we can give you a quick shout out. Okay, I think, you know, we have some audiences from Quezon City. We also have some in Manila and also have some in our provinces. So thank you so much for tuning us for today. Thank you for joining us and we encourage everyone to stay tuned until the end of the program and to listen intently to our speakers because we will be giving away prizes for the winners of our game. And we will be accepting the second round entries of our raffle. So are you guys excited to know more about what's going to happen to this lecture? Because definitely I am. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome WWF Philippines Project Manager for Sustainable Diner Project, Miss Melody Wright. Hello. Hello. Mel. How are Hi, you? Hi, Karen. I'm good. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so again, uh, Thank you, Karen, for that wonderful introduction. So again, I'm Melody. I'm the project manager of the Sustainable Diner Project. And I am ready to serve you with today's menu of knowledge. So we will be ending this week with something um, new to learn, diba, mm -hmm. Karen? So it's it's quite exciting that on a Friday, um, before we end, meron ka matututunan na bago. So first yes. on our list <laughs> will be the introduction of the Sustainable Diner Project, most especially for those um, new participants who are here with us today. Then um, next on our discussion, um, before we, we del uh, deep dive into mm -hmm. the planet-based diets, alamin muna natin yung current um, consumption or eating patterns natin and how these food choices affect our health and eventually it also affects our environment. Then uh, we will also be talking about the recent report published by WWF um, last year regarding yung sinasabi mo nga, it's the planet-based diets and how we as individuals can start our food eating journey towards going on a planet-based diet. So, syempre kailangan meron ding application part. So afterwards, after our discussion on planet-based diets, we will be sharing with you a delicious recipe coming from the Nurture Wellness Village. So one of the partners of the Sustainable Diner Project. And ito yung pinaka-exciting part sa akin. We will get to talk to someone who really has changed their diet and lifestyle. And um, ako, supporter ako nung ginagawa nila every year, eh, yung Veg Fest. So we will be having Jack Abergas of the Vegans of Manila. And lastly, as you mentioned earlier, they have to stay tuned because we will have a game at the end and also a raffle. So yeah, very exciting. So I hope you'll stay with us for uh, an hour or so para, para maging exciting naman yung learning ninyo. Meron din kayong um, mababaon after this week. So yeah, so for everyone's interest, we will be releasing our second um, comic series focusing on climate emergency and our planet's call to action to save her, especially now that we are starting to build a new and hopefully a better normal. 
I know uh, most of us do not know where to start, but our small yet collective actions can really make a difference in taking care of our planet. And it starts with our eating habits and the food choices we make. So yeah, yung routinary na eating patterns natin actually meron siyang contribution sa pag-save sa ating environment. So let's go now to your question, Karen. Um, so not everyone knows kasi that WWF is not just focused on wildlife. So here in the Philippines, we tackle every variety of environmental issues that we face, and that includes issues on our food. So the project I'm part of is called, again, the Sustainable Diner, and it aims to connect our food choices to, the effects, to its effects on the environment. So what we do is we promote and um, we integrate sustainability principles into national and local policies in, um, in our business, um, business sector, so in terms of their operations. And at the same time, we also want to um, influence the consumer behavior of Filipinos. So what does it mean ba? Pagdating sa usaping sustainable diner, ano bang ibig sabihin ng sustainable diner? So it's actually about embodying five principles. So the first one is conserve, uh, conservation of our resources, such as your energy and water. The second one is, your, is the use of your local, seasonal, and sustainable ingredients or your produce. The third is reducing the use of your single-use plastics to alleviate the overall waste that we have. The fourth one, our major topic for today, is eating more plant-based dishes. And the fifth one, which we tackled last episode, is all about reducing your food waste. So these five things, um, these are the things that we wanted to highlight in this webinar series. Ano? So save our planet is actually a play on words. So save our, as in iligtas natin, and save our which is um, nam namin or enjoy. So the aim is to educate on what it means to be a sustainable diner. So how does it go? Paano ba itong Save Our Planet webinar series natin? So we have four episodes. So the first one was done last January. So it's focused on um, reducing your waste. So focused on the food waste and plastic waste. So right now, currently, we are on our second episode focusing on eating more plant-based dishes or basically, how do we do the plant-based diet? The third episode is on April 29. Tandaan niyo po yan, ha? Please save the date. The third episode is on April 29 and we will be talking about local sourcing and conserving your resources. For the last episode in May, so... It will be a showcase of our um, educational materials and the knowledge products that the project has developed over the past um, four years. Ano? So for us, this would be a very this would be a very exciting year, and we hope that you will all tune in with us. And um, syempre, what we want from you is to learn also, di ba? So for our newcomers, welcome, welcome po sa inyo. And for our um, returning uh, participants or viewers, welcome back po. Um, stay tuned lang po sa ating mga gagawin for today. Yes. Miss Mel, di ba we have a raffle for this webinar series? Yes, Karen. Ako, medyo malas ako sa raffle. Ikaw ba, Karen? Kamusta ka sa raffle? Hindi <laughs> din ako masyado nakukuha lagi. <laughs> but sana, kapag audience ako ngayon makuha ko, sana. But I'm not yes. an audience. I'm your host. <laughs> yes, oo nga. Don't worry, Karen. So, marami pang opportunities para maging ano tayo, maging part tayo or maging winner tayo ng isang raffle, ano? most especially for this episode. So we have actually exciting prizes in store, not only for our game for today, but also for our raffle winners. So please stay tuned until the end of this episode to learn how to join. So yan. So punta tayo doon sa ating main topic na, no? Kasi ito, for sure excited na kayo dito. Kasi it's a new and relatively it are a relatively interesting topic and um, we have to know first yung rationale behind bakit natin pinag-aaralan or bakit natin um, uh, gagawin itong going on a planet-based diet. Ano? So why is it important for us to do the necessary shift in our consumer patterns or consumption patterns rather? 
So, Karen and the viewers, um, for for your information, a lot of researches already and studies have been conducted regarding our current consumption patterns. And globally, to sum it up, it has been found out that people are under consuming healthier food. So when we say healthier food, less yung pag-consume natin ng mga natural food natin like yung mga fruits, vegetables, tapos yung mga sources natin ng, pla ng protein and fat coming from plants like your nuts, your dried beans, your seeds, and your legumes. Um, aside from that, nakita rin natin na we are also consuming highly processed food. And these um, highly processed food usually contain a lot of sugars, oils, and fat. And another notable trend na nakita nung sa mga studies na yon combined, um, we have really high consumption or nagkaroon tayo ng increase in consumption pagdating sa meat. And um, that's where we get actually majority of our protein sources. So yeah, so that's globally ha. So let's now zero in on our consumption here in the Philippines. So, paano natin siya napag-aralan? So, actually, here in the Philippines, we are doing our food consumption survey. So, it's done by FNRI. So, in 2018, yun yung latest, it has been shown that we are still short of achieving our dietary energy requirement. Meaning, kulang pa rin yung ating kinakain at yung nakukuha nating energy coming from it. So, paano ba natin siya mas maintindihan? So, in the next slide... So we can see here concretely the amount and the type of food that Filipino adults, elderly, pregnant, and lactating women normally consume. So inarguably, makikita natin dito that the highest intake would be, of course, our cereal and cereal products. So given that we are actually um, we are rice eaters and rice is our staple food, so that's our main source of energy. So next to cereals, makikita natin dito, we highly consume fish, uh, meat, and poultry. Then you can also notice um, our low consumption naman pagdating sa vegetables, fruits, dried beans, and your seeds. So to further contextualize yung idea ng protein intake natin na nakita natin dun sa previous slide, so, you can see there the inadequacy and excessiveness in terms of protein. So, among the four groups na pinag-aralan, so the report shows that all age groups mentioned have excessive intake of your protein. So, matakas yung ating consumption ng protein sources. Ano? So, true enough, in the next slide, so according to the UK-based uh, think tank Chatham House, so the Philippines is actually one of the fastest growing nations that are relatively nagiging meat eaters na talaga. So mataas yung ating growth rate, di ba? So when you see the world's live, uh, livestock sector, so they are growing at unprecedented rate. And this is because of a combination of, you know, we have population growth, we have rising incomes and urbanization. So... It's projected that the annual meat production uh, from 218 million tons in 1997 magiging 376 uh, million tons na by 2030 yung ating pagproduce ng meat. So now, why are we zeroing in on meat? So what does it have to do with planet-based diets? So yan, yeah, punta tayo dun sa next slide that talks about our health concerns, yung ating um, uh, studies according to WHO. So from WHO, they, they explicitly say that food-related illnesses are the leading causes of death globally, and mostly they are known as your non-communicable diseases or your chronic diseases. So pag sinabi nating non-communicable or chronic, so these are the illnesses that cannot be passed on from person to person. And usually, they are caused by your genetic, physiological, environmental, and lifestyle factors. So one of which would be your eating patterns, diba? So each year, uh, 15 million people die from your NCDs. And um, this is between ages 30 to 69 years old. Ang bata pa, no? So, ganun. Ganun yung age range na namamatay tayo sa NCDs. 
And these are usually linked to our meat-based diets. Yung pagkain natin ng beef, ng pork, ng chicken, eggs, dairy, excessively. So examples of your NCDs include your heart diseases, so stroke, diabetes, and your cancer. So in addition, um, overconsumption of your food in general leads to overnutrition. So ito yung being overweight and obese. So yung trend na yan on our health or our mortality is actually um, manifested also here in the Philippines. Ano? So this trend is not new for Filipinos. So among the top 10 leading causes of mortality or death, pagkamatay, here in our country, six are non-communicable and four are the major NCDs such as your cardiovascular diseases, your cancers, your chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders, and your diabetes mellitus. So diseases of the heart had been consistently um, the number one cause of death here in the Philippines for several years, um, citing that it's actually more than one in five deaths. So yan, yan yung ano natin, um, reason behind bakit natin inaalam yung meat pattern natin. So it's highly related to your NCDs. Ano? So alongside with this uh, nutrition-related chronic diseases, we also see an increase in our environmental impacts, most especially yung unsustainable consumption and production natin. So in order for us to supply food for our growing population, so agriculture uses 50% of our land globally. So what happens is that um, it leads to habitat loss of our species, depleting our biodiversity, yung existing biodiversity natin. It also uses the planet's natural resources at maximum capacity, such as your water use, your topsoil tillage, your seafood consumption, and other food supply. And yung nakakalungkot dito, sa paggamit natin ng resources na to, ang ending pa rin, we are eventually um, wasting one-third of the food that is produced. And siguro maging explicit tayo dun sa, sa main reason kung bakit importanteng malaman natin yung food consumption pattern natin, apektado yung ating environment. Generally, your agri-food industry contributes to almost a third of your total greenhouse gas emissions. And bigger portion of that is actually coming from your livestock production because they produce the highest global source of your methane and your nitrous oxide. So itong dalawang to, they are potent and very powerful greenhouse gases. So yan, ganun siya ka, ka lala, ano? So makikita natin merong epekto yung pagkain natin sa health, meron din siyang e epekto sa health ng ating planet. Yeah, Ben, I was really gonna ask you that, Miss Mel, because I've really seen the impact Grabe talaga yung impact of mm -hmm. our food choices when it comes to the environment and, of course, our health. You mentioned about non-communicable diseases. But what are the things that we can do to lessen the impact? The impact, oh, oh. So, yeah, Karen, good news is that um, we have this planet-based diet. So, it's actually a good question, Karen. And for me to answer, I will let you show, uh, I will let you watch first this video. Ayan. So based on our video, so what we have now is actually the study that was published last year by WWF, and that is your planet-based diets. So paano ba siya? Um, these are actually um, not a single diet, but they are actually called planet-based diets because the results of planet-based diets are high in human 
health benefits, and low in environmental impacts. So when you say planet-based diets, um, these are not actually a new way of eating, but it's considered a flexible way of considering how diets can be adapted in local contexts. So usually, um, your planet-based diets comprised of healthy foods produced within planetary boundaries, and it basically discourages overconsumption of any food, and it encourages agrobiodiversity. So planet-based diets are not just about what we eat, but also how our food is produced and where it comes from. Yeah, yung pala yung plant-based diet, I've been always wondering what it is, Ms. Mel. But mm -hmm. now, can you tell our audiences, and also to me, how can we explore and pursue more on a planet-based diet? Yes, so you're right, Karen. So paano nga ba? Paano nga ba natin sisimulan ito? So let's see, let's see this in our second video. Ayan. So, how do we adopt planet-based diets? So, in the video, we were given four ways on how we can start adapting planet-based diets in our lifestyle. So, the first one is to eat sustainably produced food. So, yan ang pinakauna. So, how do we do that? So, your sustainable ingredients have actually, um, when you say sustainable ingredients, they have minimal impacts on nature. So, they are produced responsibly and they they don't threaten the wildlife populations or their homes. And the best way for you to know if your ingredients are sustainable is actually to get to know the people who produce them. So yung ating farmers and fisher folks. So another added value is if your food has less food mileage, meaning um, the rule of thumb is the nearer the food or the nearer the source, the better. Kasi syempre, less carbon emissions yon for the transport, di ba? So that's the first one. So second one is to eat more plants and less animals. So yeah, very easy naman siya. So one of the best ways to improve both your health and the environment is to increase how many plants you eat relative to your animals. So it's already given. So na mentioned ka na kanina that in terms of production, in most cases, animal-derived foods have higher carbon emissions than your plant-based commodities. So not only that, your plant-derived sources are packed with nutrients that can support positive health outcomes for individuals. So that's the second. So yeah, na first one, eat sustainable, uh, sustainably produced food. Second one, eat more plants and less animals. Third is to eat healthy and minimally processed food. Yan. So, as much as possible, we eat um, uh, natural foods, diba? So, the more the, the food is processed, the greater it has on, in, on our environment. Kasi yung mga emissions na ginagawa during the processing of your food, so nagkakaroon siya ng impact sa environment and at the same time, bumababa din yung nutritional quality of your food. So, if we eat fresher foods which are minimally processed um, or basically that have minimal additives, we are able to maximize the nutrients they contain and we don't need to use as many natural resources for food production. So that's the third. And the fourth one is to eat lots of different foods, not too much of any one thing. So eating too much of any food is not really good for you or for the planet. And um, ito, basic fact ito, that there is no superfood that can provide you with all the nutrients that you need. So the planet is also benefiting if you are eating a variety of foods being produced. So a good balanced diet can include many things like, for example, your whole grains, your fruits, vegetables, less sugar, um, less oil, less fat, and meat, of course. So we can also explore eating more plant-based proteins and fat sources such as your nuts, your legumes, your seeds, and your dried beans. So dito sa Pilipinas, paano ba natin masisimulang ma-adapt 
yung planet-based diets. Very simple lang. So, meron tayo ditong food guide. Ito yung tinatawag nating pinggang Pinoy. So, one way for us to achieve, so one way for Filipinos to achieve um, planet-based diets is to actually follow our own nutritional food guide or national food guide. So, your pinggang Pinoy is actually very easy to understand. Makikita nyo dyan, you have a plate. So, it uses a familiar uh, food plate that um, that conveys the right food group uh, proportions on a per meal basis. And that helps to meet your body's energy and nutrient needs. So, as you can see here, your pinggang Pinoy um, promotes moderation, balance, and variety. It also promotes the consumption of more plant-based food relative to your other sources. So, makikita nyo dyan, di ba? So, yung uh, more than half would be your rice. Then, more than half would be your gulay. Then, you also have your fruit. Then, you have um, a small portion or a minimal portion of your meat, di ba? So, by following your pinggang Pinoy, you're already starting your journey going on a planet-based diet. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much for that, Miss Mel. I've learned so much from you today. And I, I love this, this new kind of diet. Oh, nga. Tama yan. <laughs> okay, the fun is just getting started. After learning about what a fun planet-based diet is, it's time to share with you guys a fun planet-based recipe we can all try. Watch this. So for today, uh, Marlon, what are we having? So for today, uh, we're making curry, vegetable curry. One of the things we want to do when eating plant-based is you have to make sure that you look at the nutrient content. So important. No? How do you know that the food is nutritious? Because when we have a limited budget, we might as well use our money for the most nutritious food. So for example, we have what we call superfoods. What are superfoods? These are nutrient-packed. Uh, vegetables and fruits which are uh, full of vitamins and minerals you just eat a little your body is very happy what does food do to you well it makes you very makes your cells healthy and why do you want to make your cells healthy Dion happy cells the happy yeah. body itself we have to uh, feed it healthy with healthy foods uh -huh. that's true actually when choosing your food you want to make sure that you ask yourself will this help me become healthier or will this make me sick? It's like there are two arrows, no? So you, will this move me towards health or will this move me towards sickness? Plant-based uh, diets, again, supported by research, Dr. Colin Campbell, Dr. Esselstyn, uh, Dr. Oz, all of those have proven that plant health, uh, plant-based diets are very good. So Marlon, go ahead. Our ingredient is carrots. We have also um, cucumber, bell pepper, red onion, and white onion. And we have here tomato. So first, I will uh, make the nurture curry first. So while Marlon's doing that, you might be asking, what's the difference between the white onion and the red onion? Actually, the red onion is very good for cooking. For culinary pro uh, purposes, it has a lot of, it has a stronger bite. All right, it's a bit, more, uh, a bit stronger. All right. By the way, these are all wonderful superfoods. No? Look at all of the colors. So when you choose your food, you want to go for bright, deep colors like this one. So we're making curry today. Curry, by the way, is a, is a very strong, uh, very good plant-based healing food. When I say healing food, it means it has the capacity to heal the body. And one of the strongest attributes of curry is this one. It's what you call turmeric, luyang dilaw, all right? Luyang dilaw is another super food. It's used heavily in India uh, because curry, turmeric, is known to fight inflammation what is inflammation Dion? it's an infection you know when you have like the fever itself your body is inflamed so this one like the turmeric is good anti-inflammatory the same as for the uh, onion as well and also the garlic when cooking you know uh, the nice thing is in the Philippines you have a lot of very very good herbs and vegetables which are very good like your basic garlic onion ginger and yeah, that they're all very good healing foods and of course you have here your turmeric, and guess what this is? This is chili, right? Uh, pa pa paprika. Ah, paprika. Paprika, of course, is very good. No? So, paprika, 
has its uh, has its origins from uh, the peppers. So take note, this is actually lemongrass, right? Lemongrass, yes. Nice. What does lemongrass do? It actually adds flavor, and again. It adds a lot of healing powers, right? When cooking with plant-based food, all right, notice that um, Marlon is doing a lot of pressing. It's very important, you notice that he, he crushed the lemongrass. The lem when you crush the lemongrass, you release the flavors. The flavor. At the same time, you release the healing properties. All of these are actually um, gamot or medicines, yes. right? You've got your onions, you've got your tomatoes, very high in lycopene, very good for the heart, okay? Uh, what Marlon is doing is he's putting it there first, he's sautéing it a bit so that it, so releases, it, will come out the flavor. it releases the flavor of the lemongrass. That is a secret, okay? And you'll notice what Marlon is doing here is he's making what you call a vegetable stock, right? Yes. So the veg uh, what, what is a vegetable stock? You boil the onions, the garlic, the potatoes and the, and the carrots and by boiling it a bit in a little water you release the flavor and again the healing properties so it's all about uh, releasing flavor and releasing healing properties all right so there so all you have to do is to take the vegetables okay notice that we're using a non-stick pan with just very little oil first you saute all right okay and then, of course, so important, salt and pepper are critical to bring out the flavors. Look at the colors. That is, okay, when cooking, you want to make sure always that you have like a variety of colors. Especially for Filipinos, we eat with our eyes first, then we eat with our nose next, and then we eat with our tongue next. So three, we always have to think about our three, the three senses. No? First, what it looks like. Next, what it smells like, and then what it tastes like. All right. So there you are now. There's your turmeric or your curry. There you go. Look how beautiful the colors are. Okay. There you go. So the curry powder, same as the lemongrass. Mm -hmm. We need to so saute the first. spice. Yeah. That, that's a secret. Sometimes a lot of people, uh, I know this for a fact, because this is what I used to do before before I started doing culinary classes. No, you, parang, you just put the curry powder on top of the water, mm -hmm. then you mix it. But no, Marlon's secret is you saute, you saute the spice, all right, so that the flavors come out, and then you, in the meantime, you are making your vegetable stock. When you put them together, the flavors come out. That is the secret mm, of good I cooking. See. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned something today. <laughs> yeah, so. Now, if you, you can smell it, how, how beautiful the, the, the smells are. So notice that Marlon is now taking out the vegetables to put into the other sautéed vegetables. Again, you've got the, the sautéing effect brings out the flavors. Remember, roasting vegetables always brings out the sweetness of the vegetables because vegetables are actually sweet. But if you just boil them straight, hindi lumalabas. But if you sauté them like this one, all right, there you go. So Marlon's sauteing it now. Okay. Basically what he's doing is, he's bringing out the flavors and the smells of curry. In fact, we will start smelling like curry in a yes. short while. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, yum. So notice you've got color, you've got aroma, okay. And then of course you've got very strong flavors. All very important essentials in cooking, right? So there you go. And I would like to add vegetable yeah. curry is an almost complete meal. So we have the uh, vitamins and minerals from the vegetables and we also have carbohydrates. And if you want to add it protein, you can add beans or you can add, add tofu, right? True, yeah. So when you choose your tofu, make sure it is a firm type, okay? Not the soft one because it will fall apart, okay? There you go, so wow. So Marlon has just added tofu. So now this is actually a plant-based dish, which everybody can enjoy. And it's all very yummy, super yummy, okay? Um, and Marlon has just, is going to add, what is this? Uh, gata. Coconut milk. Coconut milk. Yeah. Where do you get your coconut milk? Do you have to squeeze it in the, in the palenque or there are actually substitutes in the, uh, in the grocery store? You can actually have canned gata or you can also have the powdered gata. You just mix it. 
And of course, you have it's a dried, gata, dried powdered gata. So there. Now let's talk about coconut. Why is it a superfood as well? First, for the juice, uh, for the water, it's very good uh, medicine for if you have UTI, urinary tract infection. You can drink lots of it. And then for the uh, meat, meat itself, actually the uh, the meat is very high in fat, but it's it contains good fat. All right. There's your vegetable curry. Look at that. It's got tofu, it's got carrots, it's got pepper. And do you know sometimes, Dion, I also, uh, Marlon, I also add squash. There you go. And I'm sure this is very, very tasty. Very nice. And there you go. There's your first plant-based dish, which is our vegetable curry. Look at that. Beautiful colors, beautiful flavors, and very importantly, beautiful aroma. So there you are. So you've got plant-based dishes made by Nurture Wellness Village, the team. Uh, again, Marlon Asuelo, and then Dion. My name is Kathy Turville. Thank you very much. There you have it. That was a very sumptuous vegetable curry for everyone. If there's something I've learned from the video, we Filipinos, Always start with our eyes, and next with our nose, and next with our mouth when we eat. Sobrang setup no, and I think from that recipe, we can see that eating more vegetables doesn't have to be boring. You just need a little bit of creativity and a sense of adventure. Hindi ba mas amazing na yung simple act of eating more fruits and vegetables can have such a huge impact to our environment? Majority of us kasi are medi you know, heavy meat eaters, and to be able to follow a plant-based diet, and to find a balance, we need to eat more plant-based food. Some of us here today might be curious on how we can start doing that. Um, so we've actually invited an expert on the subject. We have with us today someone who has gone through the process of lessening their meat consumption and is now someone who helps people that want to pursue a more plant-based lifestyle. Please welcome Jaka Bergas, the founder of Vegans of Manila. Hi, Miss Jack. How are you? Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me today to talk about uh, the plant-based diet. Well, we're excited to know more about your journey, how you started, and I'm quite sure our audiences have so much questions because they want to transition from one diet to another. Yes. So can you tell us what was your motivation for pursuing a plant-based diet and how did you start? Okay. Medyo matagal na journey to, no? Ilang, ilang, isang dekada na yata. So, I was practicing a minimalist to a zero-waste lifestyle in... I started about 2008, 2009. So, I was recycling. I was uh, lessening my food waste. Tapos, yung mas mindful ako sa consumption ko. Tapos, sabi ko, teka, parang, parang kulang pa. Parang feeling ko, mas marami pa akong pwedeng magawa. Ngayon, that time, I think mga a couple of years later, no, uh, I started adopting a, a plant-based lifestyle. Uh, that time, ginagawa ko siya for my health. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of health issues at that time. And then, when I was doing a lot of research about it, that's when I realized, gosh, ito pa lang ginagawa ko ngayon it can help save the planet and the animals pala. Yun yung aking, ano, yun yung aking na, nalaman. So, sabi ko, okay pala to. The, okay pala tong gawin. Mm -hmm. Kaya, ano, ever since then, I, I adopted a vegan lifestyle in 2013. Uh, so, since then, I have been vegan since then. <laughs> wow. So, it's almost eight years already. Eight years that you're a yeah. vegan? Yes. The bad... In a the Philippines, people, huh? yeah, a lot of people are very encouraged, you know, sometimes they're looking for ways how to be vegan, but then there's someone like you who can encourage them who, who are in the journey or you are in the journey for eight years now. That's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Even when I was thinking that I was vegan for a long time, tapos na realize ko ang tagal na parang wow I can't believe na I I've been doing it for that long already. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, may we ask what are the difficulties perhaps you encountered before? Um, nung nag-start kasi ako, uh, so I live in in Quezon City. 
um, nung nag-start ako, hindi pa ganun karami yung mga mm-hmm. vegetarian or even vegan restaurants. Tapos, even the the omnivore restaurants, the non-vegan ones, um, a lot of their vegetable dishes, it's riddled with a lot of meat. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of, or a lot of, just a lot of animal products. Um, so, that was one of the hard parts about it. Kasi, lalo na nung bago ako, sabi ko, oh my gosh, pagdating sa akin, grab, ano, puro ano pala, puro karne rin pala. Mm-hmm. So, sabi ko, parang, it defeats the purpose, di ba? So, yeah. that was one of the difficulties. Eventually, it became um, a, a, a little bit easier. You know, nung, nung nag-start ako, hindi pa masyadong marami yung mga mga vegan or vegetarian restaurants. Pero ngayon, sobrang dami na in Manila mm-hmm. and sobrang dami na rin mga, mga companies, mga businesses, mga small businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, pero ito yung talagang kahit um, you can ask any vegan, ito yung medyo problem pa rin, difficulty pa rin hanggang ngayon. It's the, it's the social aspect. Um, a lot of people... You know, when they when they find out that I live a plant-based lifestyle or a vegan lifestyle, um, marami sa kanila, marami sa kanila either maraming tanong, mm-hmm. which is nice, kasi I get to talk about it, no, I get to explain it. And yeah. there are some na, kasi since hindi pa nila naiintindihan, um, hindi maganda yung reaction nila. Yun na lang yun. Mm-hmm. Hindi maganda yung reaction. So, um... May times na sumasama loob ko na sabi ko, sige, wag na lang. I won't talk about it na lang, ganyan. Mm-hmm. Pero um, for the most part naman, meron namang iba na okay naman yung reaction. Pero for for me, yun yung most difficult talaga. Yung when other people try to put you down and uh-huh. make fun of you because mm-hmm. you live a different lifestyle than them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's good for me to also hear that so we can also yeah. hear the side of someone who's vegan as well. <laughs> Kaya I'm, I'm really grateful no for for talks like this kasi uh-huh. it raises awareness eh. it raises more awareness mm-hmm. na para yung mga yung mga tao talagang nagkakaroon ng more understanding about this lifestyle. Uh-huh. That's true. Can you yeah. tell us now um what are the benefits that you gain from being a vegan? Ah Marami. <laughs> so like I said, no, I started really going vegan for health. So marami na akong mga, mga health concerns ko no, na na-reverse ko. Mm-hmm. Um, I, also, I also lost weight. Um, hindi masyadong mukhang obvious, pero, <laughs> pero talagang ano. Ito camera lang yan. <laughs> it adds ba? <laughs> <laughs> pero ano, uh, pero yes, I did lose a lot of weight. Um, mas marami akong energy ngayon na sometimes it's hard for me to sleep at night kasi tumatakbo pa rin yung isip ko. Parang mm-hmm. gusto ko pa rin gumalaw, ganyan. Kahit na, alam mo kahit na parang fi- feeling ko kailangan ko na matulog pero uh-huh. hindi ako makatulog kasi sobrang daming energy. Tapos ano na rin, uh, more clarity sa sa mind so mas nakakaisip ako ako kasi I'm a learner I love to research also so I'm happy about that kasi talagang may room sa <laughs> sa brain ko for mm-hmm. more yeah. information and of course you know um big benefit din yung talagang naka we save more animals by going vegan and mm-hmm. we lessen our carbon footprint yun yung pinakamaganda yeah. din Kala oh. mo, di ba? Kala mo, kaka, ano, tatanggalin mo lang ang animal products from your plate. Pero yung simple act na ganun, ang laki na pala ng impact. Yeah. I would very much agree with you. Um, yeah. Can you share with our audiences, perhaps, what's your favorite dish, you know, as a vegan? You also like what the chef kanina um, cooked for us, oh, like a vegetable curry. <laughs> oh nga, kung pwede nga lang kunin ko eh. <laughs> From the screen, di ba? Parang sarap-sarap. Um, ako, alam mo, matagal kong pinag-isipan yan. Ano ba talaga mm-hmm. favorite vegan dish ko? Pero, I think, um, more, meron akong, marami akong favorite na vegetables. Uh-huh. Fruits and vegetables. Tapos, kasi nagbabago-bago na lang yung ano ko eh. Yung kung ano yung lulutuin ko eh. Mm-hmm. Pero, favorite ko talaga, of course, talong, oh. um, cauliflower, uh, ano pa ba, mga patatas, carrots, um, 
kangkong, yan, favorite ko yan, bagyo beans, mm-hmm. ok, Tara, ay grabe. <laughs> Baka hindi tayo matapos. <laughs> of course, saging natin. Yes. Um, yung mga pinya. Uh, ano pa ba? Um, I tried not to eat yung mga, veg, mga fruits and vegetables na hindi talaga locally available sa atin. Yung mm-hmm. ini-import pa. Um, yun, hindi ako masyado nang kumakain ng ganun. So, pero okay lang naman kasi ang dami pa rin namang available sa atin sa Pilipinas eh. So, I don't think it's a loss for me. Yeah. Marami pa rin naman talaga tayong um, nakakain. Tsaka yung pag in season, yan, yung mga durian, mm-hmm. favorite ko yan, yung pangustin, marang, ay grabe. Talaga? Ay, sayo, wow. Diba? We... we, we <laughs> Baka, baka maubos sa'yo oras, kaka, uh-huh. ano lang, discuss lang ko ano yung favorite ko. <laughs> That's good po. Kasi people think that you're very limited when you're a vegan. Mm. But then you can eat so much. And yes. at the same time, you're helping the planet and you're helping your health. Yeah. Since na-mention kanina yung non-communicable diseases mm. and having a healthy diet is one way for you to avoid it. So yes, that's true. Good. Yeah, oo. Kasi kahit sa akin, kasi kahit pa paano meron akong family history of the of these diseases, uh-huh. no? Pero for me, kasi I, I get my blood test done naman regularly. Tapos nakikita ko yung difference. Tap, wow. ano, talagang na-decrease yung chance mm-hmm. na ma-diagnose ako with those, ano, with those diseases. That's talagang cool. makikita mo talaga. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us more about Vegans of Manila? Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, so, Vegans of Manila, it really started nung naging vegan ako. So, 2013 oh. also. So, a lot of people were asking me, paano ka kumakain sa labas? Mm. Uh, anong kinakain mo? Ganyan. So, ang Vegans of Manila, it started in on Instagram. Okay. Tapos, I was inspired by this account oh, okay. called Vegans of Sydney. Yung Vegans of Sydney, they feature mga sa Australia, no? mga different vegan restaurants. Sabi ko, dito naman kasi, sorry, excuse me, walang masyado. So sabi ko, wait, I'll feature yung mga omnivore restaurants and what vegan um, dishes I can get there and how do I order vegan dishes. Tapos eventually, sabi ko, parang I wanted to do more and that's where I, I was able to talk to some of my vegan friends and that's when we um That's when we formed and organized yung VegFest Pilipinas. So yung VegFest Pilipinas, it's the largest vegan festival in the Philippines. Uh, it started in 2016. Last year, we celebrated our fifth year virtually. <laughs> Kasi uh-huh. diba, hindi ba pwede? Uh-huh. Uh, pero um, it's, we always... Um, had the event nung pwede pa. We always had the event in high foot traffic area. So we had it mm. in Eastwood. We had it in BGC. Para talagang makita ng mga tao. Kasi we wanted to really um, present ourselves to the public in a way. Yeah. No? And we want to show them this is the lifestyle. This is the vegan lifestyle. Um, we want to show you. We want you to see how ko uh, ano yung impact niya. Tapos marami kaming na, ano, marami kaming na, na hatak <laughs> na mga mm. non-vegans. And I'm glad na nakakatuwa din kasi the, the first Veg Fest, it really inspired a lot of the vegans also and a lot of the the businesses already na hindi uh-huh. pa vegan to eventually go vegan or to start their own vegan business. A lot of them, you know, they started going vegan also and inviting their family, their friends to come and see mm. what's going on. Ganyan. So talagang nakakatuwa. Natuwa mm-hmm. kami na ang dami naming um, na, na, na share namin na, na share namin yung awareness sa mga tao tapos every year talagang nag uh, ano kami nag increase nag lumalaki talaga yung yung veg fest kaya sabi namin next time parang sana kaya namin gagawin parang wala na yata ang malaking <laughs> if venue pa doon <laughs> I think meron for sure kasi oh, you, you, all true. of you the people are increasing their awareness yeah. and they're becoming more conscious with their food yeah So thank you so much, Miss Jack, for joining us thank today and you. sharing your story. Thank you also to Miss Mel and Nurture Wellness Village for giving us the tools and inspiration to start eating better for our planet. Maraming salamat po.
I hope na kinig kayo and uh, because at the end of this webinar, we are having a short game with prizes and the second round of our raffle. Before that, we are opening the floor to questions because I know you guys have a lot of questions. Uh, please feel free to write them down in our comment section. And in the interest of time, we will be covering perhaps, you know, two to three questions before we proceed to our exciting game. Please, if you have any questions, please to type them down and we are going to entertain them and we are going to answer your questions. Okay, we have here some questions. Any tips on how to eat healthy when prices are higher for healthy food compared to unhealthy food? That's a very apt question. Uh, Ms. Ja, would you want to answer first? <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> we got a lot of yes. I'm so excited. Um, okay, so pag titingin kami question no, then din na rin yung answer mo eh. Mm -hmm. na, um, yes, higher ngayon yung healthy food than unhealthy food. Pero kasi pag tiningnan mo, may kapalit 'yan. If you mm -hmm. eat, if you do save on the unhealthy food, may kapalit. Ang na sa sacrifices yung health mo. So Ang titingnan mo kasi dito, kasi when, when it comes to living a plant-based lifestyle or a vegan lifestyle, you have to look at the long term always. Uh -huh. Na, oo, right now you have to spend, pero long term, nagsisave ka rin. Nagsisave mm -hmm. ka eventually. Kasi like for me, personally, I saved a lot on medicine. Nung, nung bata-bata pa ako, um, I was I I I was sick a lot of the time. So lagi ako may medicine. As in talagang yung yung medicine cabinet ko sobrang daming gamot. Tapos <laughs> nung ano, nung naging vegan ako, mas mas aware na ako na pag nagkasakit ako, kahit magkasipon ako or mag mm. or ubuhin ako, alam ko na wait, okay, I have to uh, boost my immune system. Yeah. So kakain ako ng maras maraming orange or ng berries if if there are local berries available. Um, tapos tiniting na ko na or yung turmeric. Mm. Uh, gagawa na akong turmeric tea para to help me really boost my immune system, lessen the inflammation para pagka nagkakasakit ako, mas madali akong makarecover. Yun yung, yun yung we have to think about that eh. Kasi hindi lang, hindi lang kasi price yung kailangan natin tingnan. We have to think about the overall talaga. Yung yeah. overall aspect niya. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Uh, I really agree with what you said. It's more about investing on our health. <laughs> about you, Ms. Mel. <laughs> yes, o. Tama yun. So actually, prevention is better than cure, di ba? Mm -hmm. Yun naman yung at Thing, um uh yun naman yung motto natin and besides that uh siguro i i will disagree on some points because they're uh, um on on this question kasi if you will consider ngayon yung prices ng meat for example medyo mm -hmm. mataas din siya and your fruits and vegetables so parang equal footing na rin sila ngayon yeah. so i would suggest that it's really about your planning so yung pagplan no more on how you will budget your food and at the same time there's also this consideration that you can grow your um yeah. your uh, plant based uh, commodities diba so you can actually do your home garden so in that way makakatipid ka so mm -hmm. i think majority of the answers have have been said by miss jack na so yun na lang so susugan ko na lang yun na you can actually have your own garden it can be sustaining for you and you can have um more chances na mas fresh and syempre wala na no cost na yung pag pagkuha mo ng iyong mga fresh fruits and vegetables. So yeah. yes, very much agree. Um mm -hmm. it's always better for us to have prevention prevention rather than cure. And at the same time when you mentioned about the planting, I believe we have a webinar series on that as well. It's urban gardening, so you can check that out because you can plant yes. your own uh fruits and vegetables from your houses. Okay, we have next, we have uh, another question. How true that vegans daw po are inclined to be more sickly kasi hindi daw po kompleto ang components na kinakain nila? From Miss Jenny Pagan. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, alam nyo, yan yung lagi kong issue or concern na lagi, alam, 
I mean, my my friends and my family they mean well, mm-hmm. pero um it's not true na masakitin. Usually, pagka vegan ka, tapos sakitin ka pa rin, there's an under- underlying cause. Yeah. And you have to, you have to go to your doctor and have it checked talaga. Mm-hmm. Pero for the most part, uh, hindi, hin- mas, mas decrease kasi yung risk. Hindi rin totoo na hindi nagkakasakit ang vegans to. Yeah. Um, nagkakasakit pa rin, pero kasi for us, mas mabilis ang recovery. Yeah. Um, tapos yun nga yung when it comes to the yung mga chronic diseases, mas decreased, decreased yung chance na mm-hmm. ma, ma-diagnose ka with that. Although it's not true also na hindi ka na pwedeng magkasakit. Because I know there are some vegans na who, who were diagnosed with cancer. Pero sila, uh, naka-recover sila. Naka-recover talaga sila. Um, tapos uh, yeah I, hindi naman siya ano no i don't want to ramble on and on no pero um you just have to be careful really no uh, katulad ng sinabi kanina ni Miss Mel no you have to plan also you have to plan your meals also um ako minsan kasi hindi ko naman memorize yung nutritional info ng bawat vegetable at fruits no so i just make sure that my plate it always has all the colors yun yung maganda eh. yun ang gustong gusto ko sa fruits and vegetables kasi it's so colorful so i just make sure na i have the different colors in my plate so i have i have the rainbow color so i have red orange green blue violet so yeah basta Meron nun, kompleto nun, okay na ako. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very ag- much agree. And I think Filipinos just have a misconception. Um, there are vegetables that you can get protein from. So it's not true that they don't have protein. You know, there That's are plant-based true. diet na may protein, may carbs, yes. may fiber. Iba-iba lang yung sources natin. Mm-hmm. So for them, meron din. How about yes. you, Miss Mel? Ah, okay. With that, kasi um, it's really a case-to-case basis. Ano? I am also a nutritionist dietitian by profession kasi. So, I I agree with Miss Jack that um, there's no one-size-fit-all pagdating dito sa usapin ng pagkakaroon ng sakit. Ano? So, um, in our standpoint and to support also the planet-based diet, it's all about moderation, variety, and balance. So, hindi lang din kasi ang pagkain natin yung nagdi-dictate ng ating overall health and well-being. Na-mention ko kanina, most especially for your non-communicable diseases, meron dyang genetic factor, merong environmental factor. So, meron din siyang physiological factor. Mm-hmm. So, we cannot really um, conclude. So, tama yung sinabi ni Miss Jack, it's really better to consult your um, health specialist pagdating dito. Hindi natin siya mm-hmm. po pwedeng talagang ma-single out na dahil vegan ka, may sakit ka, or hindi ka vegan, may sakit ka rin. So, it's really something na nakailangan natin siyang pag-aralan pa with further tests. So, we cannot really say that. So, for me, it's really more about moderation, variety, and balance. Mm-hmm. That's true. You know, we can never make a hasty generalization just because a person is a vegan, that person doesn't have much nutrition or sakitin. True. <laughs> okay, can we go to another? How can we influence now the government and restaurants into a planet-based diet and lifestyle? That's a good question. Yes, tama. Oo. So if I may answer first, ano? so magandang question yan. So one one week for the episode, yeah. at the same time, meron din kaming raffle. Yeah. All right, thank you so much to our, our panel. And thank you so much to everyone for your questions. All right. Here's the most um, amazing and uh, most awaited moment that we all have been waiting for. Our game is very simple. And this is just to test what you have learned from this episode. Miss Mel will be asking questions and you will be given only 10 seconds to answer. Paunahan lang po, itype ang answer sa comment section. And a WWF representative will be sending you a message on how you can get your prize. Are you ready? Okay, Miss Mel, let's start. Yes, yeah, so keyboard warriors, get ready. Okay. So for question number one, so what is the title of today's Saver Planet episode? Yan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, time's up, and the answer is 
going on a planet-based diet or simply planet-based diet, tatanggapin na rin namin. <laughs> okay. You're there. So, yan. Hopefully, nandyan na yung mga sagot ninyo. And later on, we will check kung sino ang pinakamabilis sumagot. For the second question, so multiple choices ito. Currently, our diet is mainly composed of A, fish, meat, poultry, B, fruits, vegetables, C, cereals, or grains. So, letter lang yan, ha? Mabilis lang yan dapat. <laughs> so, the answer is letter C. Diba? May pinakita kami sa inyong um, mm -hmm. slide kanina. So, majority of our sources of energy would be coming from your cereals or grains. So, that is the second question. Third question. Give one environmental impact of food. Ayan, marami akong binanggit kanina. So, kahit isa lang doon na maalala nyo, itype nyo. Okay. So, yan. So, what are the possible um, answers for this? Siyempre, yung land use natin. Yung paggamit mm -hmm. natin ng agricultural land, paggamit natin ng resources, and also yung ating um, water, etc., food waste, mm -hmm. carbon emissions, etc. Okay. For the next question, give one way how we can adopt a planet-based diet. Ayan. Okay. So, yeah. And so, ang possible answers natin dyan, di ba meron tayong apat? Eat sustainably sourced food, um, eat more plants, less animals, ano pa? Um, eat less processed food, and the fourth one is, um, ano yung isa? Sorry, ano pa yung pang-apat natin? It's more of eating lots of different food. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yun yung ating four ways on how to adopt your planet-based diet. And last question is, when's the next Save Our Planet episode? So, time's yeah. up. Karen, do the honors of answering this last question. <laughs> okay. Um, we have repeated that and this is the third time. It's April 29. <laughs> Yay! Yes, panalo na si Karen. May price siya. <laughs> Sana kasali talaga okay, ako sa audience so ngayon. <laughs> yes, oo. So, yun. Kanina, so, minention natin na meron tayong paraffle. So, here are the mechanics. So, for each episode, we will provide a Google form wherein you can submit your details. To serve as your raffle entry, for, so kung may four episodes tayo, meron kayo maximum of four raffle entries. Mm -hmm. So if you attended the first episode at nakapag-enter um, ka, so meron ka ng um, two episodes remaining, tapos ito pa, so three pala, three episodes after today. Uh, two e episodes after today, mm -hmm. so you get more chances of winning. So yung price natin na mention ko kanina, it's a surprise, but it's something that you will be using for your sustainability journey and it's of course a WWF merchandise and other exciting products. So for each episode, we will accept entries until 12 midnight and three winners will be announced on May 31st after our last episode. So please okay. take note of the link and we hope mm -hmm. to see you guys on our next episodes. Back to you, Karen. <laughs> I hope that everyone was able to take note of that link on the raffle. I hear na bongga daw po ang prices natin. So, sulitin nyo ang raffle entries nyo and attend the next two episodes of the Savor Planet series. Before we end this episode, I would like to invite everyone to support WWF Philippines fundraising campaign, Project Silong, to help the fishing communities in the provinces of Albay, Camarines Sur, and Catanduanes whose homes and livelihood were ravaged by Super Typhoon Roli and Ulysses. In these challenging times, we believe that by working together, we can all rise above the crisis. Flash now on your screens are bank accounts number or bank account numbers where you can send your donation for our Fisher Folk. To learn more about WWF Philippines and to find out how we can help hashtag change the ending for the planet, please visit wwf.org.ph or simply visit our Facebook page and click the Learn More button to support our environmental frontliners and partner communities. That concludes 
the second episode of the Savor Planet series entitled Going on a Planet-Based Diet. Hope that we inspired you to explore more on the planet-based ingredients, dishes, and meals, not just for your health, but for the planet. We hope to see you again on April 29 for the third episode. Stay tuned on WWF Philippines' official social media pages for other announcements on future digital events. Once again, my name is Karen Nablasco, your WWF Philippines Ambassador, now signing off. God bless you, everyone.